Eastleigh hosts underdogs Oxford City in the FA Cup. Winnell talks to a former international cricket star. And can Basingstoke Bison continue their impressive home form? Hello and welcome to Sports Week, I'm Michael Connolly. This week we start with football and the FA Cup as Eastleigh and Basingstoke were in action at the weekend against lower league opposition. First, Dale Gornall was at the Silver Lake to see if Oxford City could add more misery on Eastleigh manager Ian Baird. Eastleigh have had a poor start to their league campaign and we're looking for some better form in the FA Cup this weekend against Oxford City. Basham's onside, easily caught napping and Steve Basham has lifted Oxford into the lead and it's a nightmare start for the Spitfires. Eastleigh manager Ian Baird less than impressed. Baird has been critical of his side when it comes to taking chances this season and the Spitfires were at it again, failing to convert from this scramble. Andrew White sending the ball into the stands after a succession of efforts. Oxford were then given a chance to double their lead from the spot after White was adjusted to a trip Darren Pond in the box. Basham then looking for his second. Saved by Barford and he stopped the rebound. Barford has done it again for Eastley. Terrific saves. This seemed to kickstart the home side into life with Captain Jordan having this effort cleared off the line. Eastley's surely defending was again exposed with Darren Pond finishing emphatically to double City's lead. And there is Darren Pond. Goodness me, what a finish. A goal worthy of any FA Cup tie by Darren Pond. Eastley were then handed a lifeline after Jamie Brown was bundled over in the box. No mistake from Slabber. It's 2-1 and Eastley are right back in the game. Slabber with his fourth of the season. However, any hopes of a comeback were crushed when Pond rose highest in the box to restore the two-goal lead. The game ending 3-1 to Oxford City. Dale Gornall, Winchester News Online. Despite that disappointing defeat, Eastleigh fans received some good news before the game when 17-year-old Sam Wilson signed a new two-year contract, despite rumours linking the teenager with Premier League side Fulham. After the game, Wilson told us how he felt about the signing. Yeah, I'm very happy I can finally finalise being at Eastleigh and make sure that I stay here for another two years. Whether another club comes in for me, I'm not having my control in it, so just happy to sign. Basingstoke saw off Hartley Wintley last week in the Hampshire Senior Cup, but on Saturday were up against them again in the FA Cup. Gareth Messenger was at the game. Basingstoke went into this game with Hartley Wintley in good league and cup form and Wes Daly's early opener certainly set the pace. It didn't take long for the home side to double their lead. David Pratt beat the defence to make it his third goal in two games. Sean McCauley has been in good form for Basingstoke since his move from Eastleigh and his persistence paid off here. Striker Tim Seals made it four with this header before half time. Dragons came close from this corner, but that was all in the second half. The win puts Basingstoke into the next round and with an extra £7,500 prize money. Gareth Messenger, Winchester News Online. Now, time for something different. You may remember Average Joe's from the film Dodgeball. 
And at the University of Winchester, the dodgeball team is preparing for its new season. Henry Lowe and Tit went down to find out more. There are five Ds of dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive and dodge. And the Winchester Bullets know them all. Winchester dodgeball are one of the newest sports teams at the university. And Vice Captain Johnny Fuller told me about the humble beginnings. Three years ago, I was set up by a guy and there was like six of them. Socials were going into a pub and playing Scrabble. And now we had like 60 people on our sign-up day and probably the same numbers that have gone back. So it's really, year on year, it's got better and better. Yeah. Um, and obviously last year we won the most improved team in colours, which was, you know, recognition of that. It was, uh, it was really good. I spoke to a player to see if the film really does echo reality. It's, uh, it's pretty much like the film. You kind of lob a ball at someone, if it hits them, they're out. It, anywhere's available, you can hit them anywhere. You're not supposed to aim for the head, but if you do in an out game, it's just one of those things, nobody's vindictive, with, uh, even at the tournament, everyone's a bit of a laugh. Winchester also had a special guest at the weekend. England dodgeball player Stephanie Chatfield told me what she thought about Winchester's setup. They did some good warm ups and then um, a nice few games together, um, and you get to mix up the boys and girls as well, which is really good. It encourages the girls to um, maybe perfect their throw a little bit more because it's harder to play against the guys. Um, so, yeah, it seems pretty good. Dodgeball may be a bit of fun in games, but sometimes accidents do happen and people can get hurt. Three, two, one. <laughs> Henry Lewin Tit for Winchester News Online. The first game for Zimbabwe in the 2003 Cricket World Cup was well known for Henry Olonga and Andy Flowers' protest against the political regime in Zimbabwe. But last week, Olonga was in Allsford and Gareth Messenger caught up with the former international. Once the leading bowler for the Zimbabwe attack, now a life dedicated to singing and Christianity. In 2003 at the Cricket World Cup, Henry Olonga wore a black armband in protest of Robert Mugabe's political regime in Zimbabwe. But why did Olonga protest? Basically, uh, the reason we did it was multifaceted. We were standing up against the tyranny in Zimbabwe, which covers a lot of bases. You're talking about human rights abuses in the early 80s, you're talking about corruption in government in the 90s, you're talking about the war in the DRC. Alonga was in Allsford on Friday and his forced exile from Zimbabwe has seen him away from his country for eight years because of crimes of treason against Mugabe and Zimbabwe. So what does the future hold for Henry Alonga? As far as Zimbabwe goes, I, you know, like I said, I'm at the mercy of the forces that be, or the powers that be there, and if, if they see a need for me in any kind of way, I might have an incentive to go back. <laughs> And finally, um, Henry, do you have anything to say to Robert Mugabe? You know, I don't think what we said was that nine years ago changes. You know, we were just appealing to the powers that be to stop abusing people's human rights and to stop the madness. Gareth Messenger, Winchester News Online. And if you wish to see the full interview with Henry Alonga, please log on to www.winnell.co.uk. To ice hockey. And the Basingstoke Bison have enjoyed some consistent home form this season and we're looking to stretch this at the weekend against the Telford Tigers. I saw what turned out to be an exciting match. Fresh off the back of three consecutive defeats, the Bison welcomed the Telford Tigers to the Planet Ice Arena, knowing that they need to put some points on the board. And after a disappointing opening from both teams, Marcel Petran put Basingstoke 1 0 up, scoring the only goal in the opening 20 minutes. The second period provided a lot more action though, and despite Telford being on top for the opening few minutes, Tribe put the Bison 2 0 up. Shortly after though, Telford surprised the hosts, making it 2 1. And only a few minutes later, Oakford made it 3 1. Closely followed by Steve Moria putting the Bison 4 1 up. And then Miller completed the second period route with Basingstoke's fifth. And then Chong got Basingstoke's sixth. And Dubeck added a seventh. In a very intense game with a lot of hard hitting, Wiggins got taken off the ice after this brawl with Telford's number 20. Although it was Telford who got the final goal of the match, albeit a consolation, making it 7-2. But there was still time for another scrap. Bruce and Miller this time trading punches. I think I'll let you decide who won this one. 
So Basingstoke end their three-game losing streak with an emphatic 7-2 win. Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. And I'm pleased to say that I'm now joined by Bison player coach Steve Moria. How are you, Steve? I'm very good. How are you? Good. Um, I'm going to jump straight in. Um, the Bison have had some mixed results so far this season. Um, for example, on Saturday, they won 7-2 against the Tigers. And then they went away to Guildford the next day and lost 7-2. And it's been a bit inconsistent. Uh, what do you think the reason is for this? And how can you stop this from happening again? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's a difficult question. I mean, if, uh, you know, if I knew the answer, you know, we'd rectify it right away. But um, we're playing well at home, um, consistent. We're playing hard. Uh, we've, we've won three of our four games at home, uh, losing to Slough by the odd goal. But away from home, uh, like you said, we're struggling a little bit. And um, we've, we've, we've got to change what's happening. Uh, a lot of the games were getting uh, heavily outshot and, and outscored. Um, so we just need to, bear, we need to bear down, I think, in, in different areas of... Uh, you know, of the game when we're away from home and, and maybe pre prepare a little bit differently. But, uh, you know, obviously things have to get better and they will get better for us. Okay. And uh, what is your plan for the rest of the season? Where do you think you're going to finish and what's the game plan? Well, I mean, uh, you know, the, the sort of grand prize is, uh, you know, winning the league and, and winning the, the playoff championships. And it's always sort of my goal to, uh, you know, to win that playoff championships. That's the exciting one that, uh, that I want to win, that most people want to win. Uh, you know, you go, to, you go to the final four weekend, hopefully win your semi, and, and, and if you win that final, you've got that summer to sort of uh, walk around with your chest out, you know, having, having won it all. So, um, you know, the goal for the Bison is to finish, uh, you know, as high as we can. We, you know, we want to finish in the top four, and we want to come home with, uh, with a trophy. Okay, um, going back to my uh, previous question, um, to do with your consistency, do you think you are good enough to finish in that top place with you dropping points away from home? Yeah, at, at this stage, you look at uh, our form and say no. Um, I still believe we haven't reached anywhere near our potential. We started very, very well for the first couple of weeks, and we've had uh, a hiccup over uh, you know a two or three week period where we lost uh, three games in a row. We need to develop the consistency. We've got to win away from home, uh, you know, low scoring three two wins, you know, those sort of games which aren't happening right now. Where we're giving up seven goals here and seven goals there, and we're not going to win hockey games uh, giving up that many goals. So, I think team defense is is is, a, is an issue we have to look at and improve on and. And also, you know, scoring and bearing down in front of the net. Okay, um, two key players this season so far, I think, Petrad and Miller, uh, both been getting a few goals. What do you think of their form? And is, is there any other players that stand out to you that have performed well so far? No, I, I, I fully agree with you there. I think uh, those have probably been the two players that um, have sort of led the team right now, um, both new to the Bison. I think Petran, uh, you know, obviously he's, he's a big player, he, he could play physical, he's got the, the, the big shot and because he's got the big shot he scored some goals. Um, you know, his form, especially at home, has been, uh, you know, exceptional. I think it's a little bit different for these guys who've, um, who've just come over for the first time this year, uh, the two slowbacks and the Czech, Czech player. Um, we're playing Saturdays and Sundays where in their countries they're playing um, Friday, Sunday or, or Friday, Tuesday, so there's always a gap. So I think at times some of the guys when they first come to the country it, it's a little bit difficult playing that um, you know that Saturday and, and Sunday you know in a row but um, yeah I mean I'm happy with uh, you know Petran you know he, he's, he's gonna be a good player he's, he's loved by the fans and uh, same with Miller Miller came didn't have his best year last year playing for two, di two different clubs and he has sort of took the responsibility on of being one of our leaders which is uh, you know which is great okay and um Ice hockey in general in England, uh, I think it's a growing sport. How do you think it's developed, and what do you think could be done to make it um, more accessible? And yeah, it's UK? it's a good question. It's it, it's gone through uh, you know ups and downs. You know, you know, I've been here for for 20 years now, and you know we've reached we've reached areas where you know I remember a game playing in Manchester. We had 14,000 people watching us, and you know Sheffield and Nottingham, 8,000, 10,000 people watching us. Um, that, that was probably 10, 12 years ago, but it's, it's come down whatever, for whatever reason. Maybe the prices went up, um, I'm not sure, but um, it has its ups and downs. And it's just kind of nurturing uh, the youth and developing you know, British players. I think that's, that, that's crucial. Um, sponsorship is obviously important. You know, we need sponsors on board for all teams to be uh, sustainable. And obviously we need the people coming out. And, you know, I think the people of Basingstoke really enjoy ice hockey. They enjoy uh, watching the Bison, and it's it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting for me and exciting for uh, the players to be a part of it. Okay, Steve, thanks a lot for coming in and answering my questions. Pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. And finally, this week, Sports Week had a taste of action as Sam Ashton entered the ring when he went to Winchester Boxing Club. 
I'm here at Winchester Boxing Club, ready to be put through my paces. Let's get ready to rumble. The club only reopened last year after a long period of closure and runs classes for all ages and abilities. The club has been so successful since its reopening that it's had to extend its opening hours. These include ladies and junior boxing classes. Left to the body, right to the body, hook body, hook body. Now I'm no rocker, but how hard can this really be? Unfortunately for me, boxing is not quite as easy as these guys made it look. And I learnt the hard way to always keep my guard up. much fun as that was, and I was pretty good. I think I should probably leave it for professionals. Well that's all from us this week, but for more award-winning news and sport, don't forget to log on to www.winall.co.uk. Thank you and goodbye.